So this is leading up to understanding the investment demand graph. There will be a reading on Blackboard that will cover this information also, so you have two ways to learn about it. This graph tends to confuse people, so I want to go over the concepts that are behind it. Some of them are review. If you're a business and you're looking at like this fancy machine and you're thinking of buying it for your business, when you are a business making the decision of what capital you want to purchase, you're going to take into account the cost of the machine, let's say it's $200, and then the return on the machine that you're going to get. So let's say that your expected revenue, because you've purchased this machine, you expect it to be $220. The revenue you're going to get back is greater than the cost of the machine. So should you purchase the machine? It seems like you should. However, one of the things that businesses have to keep in mind is that when they purchase the machine, where are they going to get the money from? They have to get a loan. Excellent. They have to borrow it. They're either going to borrow it from a bank or they're going to borrow it from financial investors. So they have to figure out what they're going to have to pay back as an interest rate on that borrowed money. The return on this investment that they're expecting, then, is 10%. The way that you figure return on investment is you take the revenue that you expect to get, the $220, minus the cost of the machine, take that amount, divided by the cost of the machine. It's kind of like new minus old over old. The new amount you're going to have compared to the old amount that you're spending for the machine over the old amount you're spending for the machine. Times 100, and that gives you your rate of return for your investment of $200. You will get 10% back on that $200. That is your rate of return, or I should say expected rate of return. That's what you're thinking is going to be the rate of return on that machine. But as Dan says, the businesses have to weigh that against how much is it going to cost as a, an interest rate on a loan for the money to buy the machine. And let's say that the interest rate on a loan for the $200 to purchase the machine is 5%. The rate of return on the machine is 10%. If you balance those out, you compare them, then that's when you can decide whether or not, as a business, you want to buy the machine. Return on your investment, 10%. Compared to interest rate on the loan, 5%. Now you can answer the question, should the business buy the machine? Yes, yes. because the benefit is greater than the cost. The benefit of spending that $200, of borrowing the $200, is greater than the cost of borrowing the $200. So they should do it, and then they would borrow the money, and they would purchase the machine, and that would go towards increasing your investment spending component of aggregate demand. Now, if instead the interest rate was 9% on the loan, does the benefit still outweigh the cost? Yes. yes. So should, by economic standards, should they borrow the money and purchase the machine? Yes. If the interest rate was 9.9 .9 repeating percent, if that was possible, yes, they should do it. What is 9.9 .9 repeating equal to? 10 percent. They should purchase all capital for which the benefit is greater than and, and just equal to the cost. Now we're talking about aggregate. <clears throat> so to make things simple, let's pretend that there's only one place in the country to buy capital. That there's one store that sells capital, all capital for businesses. That's totally um, unrealistic, but just to keep it simple. Let's say that you go into this store as a business owner, and you ask the person who's working at the capital store, you say, hey, what kind of capital, what kind of machines you got here that's going to give my business a 20% rate of return or higher? I'm looking for all the capital you got here that can give my business a 20% rate of return or higher. And the store owner says, whoa, the 20% rate of return, that's pretty high. We don't have any 
machines here that's going to give you a 20% rate of return on the money you spend for the machine. We don't got that. Sorry. We have zero dollars worth of investment capital here that will give you a 20% rate of return or higher. And you say, oh, okay, well, what if I lower my expectation of the return? What, what do you got here that's got an 18% rate of return or higher? And they say, okay, well, we got this $2 thing in the store that has an 18% rate of return or higher. So that's the total amount of investment spending capital in that store that has 18% rate of return or higher. You say, okay, what if I drop it again? If I go to 16%, what you got that has a 16% rate of return or higher? And they say we got $7 worth. That $7 worth includes that thing that had an 18% rate of return or higher. It includes that $2 thing. So it's going to accumulate as you drop your expectation of saying, okay, how about 12% or higher? How about 10% or higher? It will include all the other things that they've mentioned to you before in that total. So the total will get bigger because it's cumul accumulating. And there'll be more things that have a lower and lower rate of return. And you keep dropping your expectation, then the total amount of capital in the store with that rate of return or higher will increase and increase. So if we were to graph that, that all things in the capital store with a certain expected rate of return or higher, if you start off with high expected rates of return, there won't be that much investment spending in the capital store that will match that high of a rate of return or higher. But as you drop your expectation, let's say the 7% rate of return or higher, there will be more and more things in the capital store that will give you that rate of return or higher. I tell students to think of the capital store as being really specially set up so that in this aisle, they keep all the stuff with an 18% rate of return. And then in the next aisle, all the stuff with a 17%. And then in here, 16%. And as you go through the store, at this end of the store, it has lower rate of return capital. Lower and lower as you keep moving down aisle after aisle. Notice on this graph that it says real interest rate also. It is a double duty y-axis. It's measuring both the expected rate of return and the real interest rate. And the idea there is that we said the businesses will purchase all capital that has a certain rate of return to match the interest rate in the economy. So that they've already presumably gone to the bank and the bank has said we will loan you the money at a, let's say, 5% interest rate. That means the business will walk into the capital store and say, hey, I can get a loan at 5% interest rate. So I want you to show me all the capital in the store that has a 5% rate of return or higher, and I'll take it. I'll buy it. Because it makes logical sense for me to get a loan to buy all the stuff in the capital store that has that rate of return that matches the interest rate or higher. But it doesn't make any sense for you to buy stuff that has a lower rate of return. You will say, forget all that stuff on that side of the store. I don't want it because the rate of return is not good enough for me to pay off my loan. But I'll take everything with 5% or higher. That's a good deal for me. The benefit outweighs the cost and I'll buy it. Lucas. Um, I was just going to ask if you meant 14 instead of all these years Oh shoot, yes, I did. Although <clears throat> it could be 14 million million because it's more than two dollars. <laughs> but yes, thank you. <laughs> um, here, this tells us then at certain interest rates how much investment spending will go on in the economy. You can figure out exactly then off of this investment demand curve how much investment spending will happen when the interest rate is a certain level in the country. It will tell you what the investment spending figure will be in the country. All right, you guys.